Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Residents of Fate. Alright, let's ad advance to the next chapter and, uh, hopefully, I'll do better this time because I made sure that I'm well prepared. Chapter 1, end. I already did, so. Been seeing more than our share of monster attacks lately. And by monsters, I mean so rapists. You think that's why there's been so much guard work? That's a good guess. Where's Leanne? The bath. On second thought, we don't need her. Come here, you. Aren't you a sweet young thing? Not getting cold feet, I hope. What, are they watching a porn tape from the 1940s? Another monster about to strike. There's a lot of that going around. <laughs> Penis joke. Something always happens just when things start getting good! Last time it was the Kool-Aid Man! A monster? Here? You know, monsters don't usually sound like girls fumbling hey, around in the dark. Not wasting any time! You know, I think that this scene was directly inspired by every single cliché anime scene ever! Come on, get your ass up here. What? Wow, she gave him first degree burns with that slap. <laughs> Must have been some monster, huh? Ah, <laughs> oh, give me a break. So sorry. You see anything? Funny, I was about to ask you the same thing. <laughs> I didn't see a thing, okay? He's lying, I know that skin rash on Leanne glows in the dark. Look, huh? <laughs> what too small? You're right. Falcon slap! Not a single light. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Second degree burns. Leanne is getting good. Go for a trip? Yeah, I am. I'm good in the dark. And apparently nobody works at the power station, which is why we have to go and do it ourselves. Who wrote this? You didn't see anything, right? Zephyr? He's good in the dark. Will you knock it off? Because Zephyr's eyes takes three seconds to adjust to the darkness, as opposed to the normal 20 to 30 minutes for an average human. Yes, I get it, game. It's dark. Move on. Whoop. Power's back on. Now that means that we don't have to go to the power station after all, right? Right? Alright guys, I'm gonna go off on a little tangent here. I've been reading the comments that you guys have been posting, and I thank you guys that you are uh, posting encouraging hints and tips to me. Thank you very much for all those tips, and I appreciate those very much. Now, what I'm doing here is cutting out most of the video of me being completely clueless or stupid while I play. I think we've quite clearly established from the last video that I was awkward while playing the game. Well, after the last chapter, it was quite clear that I was hopelessly unprepared for the boss, so before recording, I took it upon myself to make sure that I was prepared. I leveled up, customized my weapons, and did the arena matches. Now, I really don't think that you guys need to see me level grinding. I hope that we can just assume that I do level grind in order to be prepared for the next level. Now that I've explained that, there is something else I also have to explain, which is the dungeons. Now, contrary to popular belief, I'm actually more than halfway into the game with several hours of footage recorded. And I can safely tell you that, number one, the story doesn't kick in at all so far, and number two, you basically go through a dungeon to reach the chapter's boss. I'm just gonna skim over the dungeon parts where I'll talk about what you're going to be facing, any difficulties, and what would make it so you don't struggle, like I did. Now with all that said, we can continue on. Now before the dungeon, there are these roadblocks that block your path. These roadblocks are just there to make sure that you actually fight some monsters in the chapter, really. Shouldn't be too difficult. After you get the first roadblock out of the way, you can continue on. You don't have to clear the other two roadblocks, but you can if you want. Inside the power station, the map will be outlined like this. The boss is here. The places over here have treasure chests. 
When I played through the first dungeon, I had no idea that the treasure chest looked like this, and I missed some things. Luckily, I finally caught on and got some useful things. Probably the only things that you'll come across that will really give you any difficulty are these spider machine gun things, and these huge lumbering beasts. I'd suggest killing them first before they have the chance to get to you, because they do deal a good amount of damage. Anyway, on to the boss. This boss was really easy for me, and I was able to beat him in one go, mainly because I spent a long time leveling up and making sure that I was well prepared. I think I was a little over prepared, just a tad too much though. Uh, this guy's strategy is targeting one person in your team and continually zapping him or her with electricity, which will give you the chance of getting shocked, which will slow your aim gauge and not gain a whole lot of multipliers. The good thing is that this boss is really, really slow, and he won't attack you until he's right up in your face. You can either continually use your hero gauge and keep running around so that he can't get anybody, or you can do the bait strategy where you have your healer, in this case being Leanne, just take punishment from this guy and healing regularly, and have the other two guys just wail at him from a distance. Since the boss will concentrate on just one person, you won't really have to worry about multiple party members getting zapped. Unless, of course, you get too close to it and it unleashes its area electricity move. Again, this wasn't very difficult for me, but then again, I was overpowered. doing right thousands of miles away a hospital loses essential power i'll be waiting outside maybe you should join him but don't take the candle i won't be able to see it. hey it may be dark down here but chandeliers as bright as ever hey let's go and topple it leanne it's beautiful isn't it it's hard to tell until you look at it from a distance. Yeah, well with a name like that, you'd think it would at least give us a little more light. I like it better this way. Holding a candle with hot wax dripping on my hands, giving me mild burns. Hey! All done! Two seconds the light comes Time on and up. Vash is already outside the building. He's the Flash in disguise. Hurry up, Zephyr! We're gonna leave you here! Good, then I won't have to deal with you. I'm used to being alone. Sorry, did you say something? I mean, you were only a few feet away when you said it quite clearly to me. I couldn't hear you at all. Ah. 
I'm using an escape hex this time. Good for me. I thought I might find you here. You've been here for 17 hours, you know. Could you leave us alone? I promise I won't be long. You see, she's telling me her recipe on how to make of that course. French bread I always loved. I won't let those deaths be in vain. I'll remake the world as she wanted it to be. She wanted the world to look like it was directly mirrored from Robot Unicorn Attack. Really cool song, by the way. Very catchy. Think it would be cool to broadcast that song on the speakers? Your indignation is my own as well. Or was it indigestion? I forget which. It may, in fact, be the only thing we share. Apart from our bland personalities. How can a machine rule our lives? How have we fallen so low? The sequel to Wally! -E! Once men built a giant tower and were struck down for their insolence. Um. But we face no god. Oh, Babel! That's right. I was thinking of something else. This is a challenge. Whenever I feel down, I just look at his ridiculous hair and I feel all tingly inside. 